Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan Embry. I am the brand ambassador at Travel Media Group, and I want to thank everyone for taking the time to join me on this webinar this afternoon. I am super excited to share this presentation with you all. Now, at the end of this webinar, we'll be providing my direct contact information in case you had any follow-up questions with the content that I'm going to be sharing today. Now, you can also use the chat feature, which is located right in your toolbar to type any sort of questions or feedback. And I will be responding to those questions personally following the conclusion of today's webinar. Also, be on the lookout since today's presentation will feature an interactive poll, and I would absolutely love your participation. Now, in today's webinar, we're going to be looking at several different illustrations and examples of the modern day traveler's journey to booking a hotel. And I want to start by examining what a traveler's journey to booking used to look like in the past. And from there, we're going to observe all the changes in addition that has really led to the evolution and modernization of the traveler's booking journey in 2019. So as we take a look at the action diagram on the screen, we see a very simplified version of what the traveler's journey used to look like. And one of the things I want you to note when looking at this diagram is the shared entry point where the majority of travelers would start their booking search and journey. If travelers were using the internet to research on where they were going to stay, search engines like Google were the most popular and common, common starting points for travelers. From there, travelers decided on whether they wanted to re visit review sites like TripAdvisor to help influence that booking decision. But it was in the past that travelers really put most of their tr trust in their own experience or word of mouth from very close friends and families, more so than they did with other travelers as they do today. It really wasn't until the era of social media did the emphasis on user-generated content and reviews really start to heavily influence travelers' booking decisions. Now, if a traveler was not satisfied with the reviews they were seeing online, they were redirected right back to the same entry point, Google, to start a new search and continue their journey. But if they were satisfied or some at that time did not even care to see the hotel's reviews, they were forwarded to a site to make their booking decision and end their journey in just a, a short few steps. Now, another thing to note when looking at the way that travelers used to book was the lack of booking endpoints that were available to the traveler. In the past, there were fewer OTAs and booking sites for travelers online, which meant less competition in the space, which as we know is not the case today. In fact, according to a recent study, 76% of US travelers say that understanding all of the lodging options is important when booking a trip. So as you can see from the statistic, the modern day traveler is more informed than ever before and understands that there are resources and online tools at their disposal to ensure they are making the best booking decision possible. There is also more competition than ever before between OTAs and other online booking sites for travelers to use their site when finally making a purchasing decision or booking decision. So I wanna take an, a look at another diagram illustrating what that online competition and landscape looks like today in comparison to what it looked like in the past. And right off the bat, we can see the number of options have multiplied. Travelers now have the option to start at multiple entry points to begin their booking journey. Meta search sites like Google or Bing, social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, review sites like TripAdvisor and any one of the dozens of OTA sites that are out there. It's each one of these places online is where a, a traveler could potentially begin and end their journey, sometimes following a single path to booking and sometimes utilizing all of these channels. The landscape is as competitive as ever and all of these sites are fighting to influence your potential hotel guest as they search for their best booking option. But this diagram shows really a high level track of where travelers could be potentially influenced along their booking journey and doesn't really feature those individual sites. So let's dive even deeper on what that looks like. 
And as we dive deeper, we some, see some of the individual sites that travelers potentially could come in contact in their booking journey when it comes to your hotel. What this image should signal to hoteliers is that no longer is it viable for a hotel to only be optimized in one or two areas online. You need to be consistent and refined across all channels of the industry and have a strong understanding of what sites online are drawing travelers to your hotel and what sites are hurting your chances of being found and ultimately chosen. So let's take a look at an example of how this journey could play out in a real life scenario. And as we saw from the statistic earlier, today's travelers are factoring all of the lodging options before making a booking decision on where to stay. So in this, in this example, we see two travelers starting their booking journeys on two very different sites, but for the exact same hotel. See if you can identify what sites are drawing that traveler closer to booking with the hotel and what sites are actually hurting their chances of being chosen along the traveler's journey to booking. Now, Traveler A Googles the property and begins their search like most of us do through a popular online search engine. Meanwhile, Traveler B starts directly on TripAdvisor to check out the hotel's reviews and ranking in comparison to its market. Now, luckily for this hotel, both the hotel's Google listing and TripAdvisor page are claimed and optimized with high-resolution photos and overall positive reviews and sentiment. Traveler A continues their journey by clicking on booking.com link that they see near the top of the Google search to check the pricing for the hotel. While Traveler B notices that the property has a Pinterest page and explores the hotel's profile for more information, and better pictures of the property. At this stage, both travelers are extremely pleased with what they have seen so far and as they make their way through the booking journey. Now, traveler A needs one more, one more site with positive affirmation before purchasing and decides to check out the hotel's TripAdvisor page. Meanwhile, traveler B is ready to end their journey and make that purchasing decision. They head over to orbits.com to confirm their booking, but before they click, they notice an unusually lower score and ranking than they saw on the hotel's TripAdvisor page. They click to read more and see several very negative and very recent reviews. This shakes Traveler B's confidence a little, and they decide not to book immediately, decide to weigh their options a little while longer. Now, Traveler A, after seeing all the information they were looking for on the hotel's Google listing, the pricing information on booking.com, and the review feedback on TripAdvisor, they are finally ready and very excited to book at this property. They end their journey on Travelocity, where the recent positive reviews on that site further solidifies their confidence in the best booking decision. Now, Traveler B looks to continue their research. They head over to the hotel's Facebook page, where they discover that a friend and follower of theirs had recently booked and stayed. However, this friend did not recommend the hotel and wrote a very negative review of the property with sent very similar sentiment to what Traveler B saw in Orbitz. Traveler B, trusting his friend's recommendation and listening to the reviews that he saw in Orbitz, decides not to stay at the hotel and instead books with the local competition. So as you can see, even a couple listings, if not optimized, can completely derail a potential guest on their booking journey and push them right through the front doors of your local competition. Now, this was just an example of two travelers' journeys. Try to imagine all of the different places and how many travelers can start and where they can end their booking journey like we saw in the last slide. Imagine all the variables associated with when the traveler starts their journey. Is there a negative review on top of some of these sites and channels right now for your hotel? How long has that review been there? acting as a barrier for your hotel, pushing travelers to your competition instead of drawing them closer to booking at your hotel? And could you right now identify the sites that are acting as facilitators or barriers for your hotel in the path down the traveler's journey? And if the answer is no, how much revenue are, is that costing you? The key to being successful within the modern day traveler's booking journey is optimizing not just a portion of your hotel's online presence, but its entirety. The one thing we can't predict is where and when a traveler will find your hotel online. 
but what we do know is that they will. And when they do, is your hotel in the best, con best position to convert? I wanna continue this presentation by taking a look from a different perspective at some data-driven real life uh, traveler's booking journey examples. Now this example is based off a real life traveler's data search collected by Google and was put together online by Think With Google. And then in this example, Google follows a traveler as he searches for a hotel using its search engine. This data gives a great insight into what the modern day traveler looks for during its journey to book. We also get a clear idea of how much goes into a booking decision in 2019. This specific journey or booking decision lasted over 64 days and had 150 touch points. Now imagine if we layered out those touch points similar to, we did, similar to the last slide. Think about how many opportunities that would be in, there would be in that span to influence this traveler in their booking decision. But as we take a look at this example, we see the traveler starting their search, uh, their booking journey, by searching hotels near Port of Miami. And after the uh, traveler's initial search, the traveler begins to start researching specific brands within the Miami market. Now, although she's searching specific brands, you can see the sales funnel beneath the traveler's avatar actually widen. And this is because within the session, the traveler searches a total of 10 different searches. In today's world, consumers know that they have more information than ever when making this purchasing decision, and they're gonna research multiple hotels in a market and figure out which one offers them the best value. Again, meaning that in order to be competitive in your market, hoteliers cannot take any shortcuts when it comes to their online presence or risk the loss of revenue and market share to competition. Now, as we continue down this journey to booking, we see that the traveler conducts another multi-search session, this time searching via the traveler's mobile device. In fact, Google states that mobile searches for hotels with blank grew over 60% in the past two years. The traveler's journey is no longer completed from just behind the computer screen anymore. Travelers are using their mobile phones, tablets, and now voice search to conduct their research. This should also signal to hoteliers the importance of a strong digital presence to ensure visibility across all platforms, no matter where the traveler's journey takes them. And finally, we come to the conclusion of this traveler's booking journey, where after 64 days and 150 touch points, they've decided on their booking decision now note that when the traveler decides to book the hotel, they do so back on a computer rather than through mobile. And this example gives us a great view from the perspective of the traveler when it comes to searching, searching online in general. But what it doesn't do is reveal to us all the local hotels that the traveler encountered along their booking journey. For that, we're gonna take a look at one last diagram. And I wanna use this illustration to really walk through the traveler's journey to see how booking decisions are made when multiple hotels in a market are involved. Now, as we start at the top of this booking funnel, we first see all, um, imagine all of the hotels in the market. For this example, there are seven, but in your market, there might be a lot more. Now, the first thing that most of us consider when we're planning a trip is what we're willing to pay. And more often than not, this is not a single price, but more of a range. In this case, let's say the traveler is willing to spend anywhere from $85 a night to $120 a night. So we eliminate the more economy and budget hotels that might be charging $80 or less, or the upper mid-scale hotels charging $125 or more. And as we continue to move down the funnel, we see the traveler further shrinking their options by looking at value-added factors like amenities, the location of the property, and sometimes brand loyalty. Now finally, the traveler has narrowed down their search to three hotels in the market. Again, depending on your market, this could be upwards of five, seven, potentially 10 or more. But in this scenario, all three of these options are within the traveler's desired price range, have comparable amenities, and similar locations. So the question is, how does the traveler decide where they should book between these three comparable and competing hotels. 
And the answer lies within the online presence region of this funnel. When everything is equal, travelers are going to go to social media, reviews, and user-generated content to, de to determine the best value and make their decision. If we surveyed 100 travelers right now and asked if everything up to this point was equal, but the red and blue hotels were rated three stars on review sites and the green hotel was rated four, how many of those 100 travelers are booking at the green hotel? Well, unless you're dropping your price up here to gain more market share down here, you would say a majority, if not all of travelers are picking the green hotel. I could even argue that some of the travelers would be willing to pay a little more because of the reviews online. And this is why the area, this area of the traveler's journey and booking funnel is so critical. This is the online battleground where you are competing every day for revenue and travelers. So my challenge to you is to ask yourself, who are the hotels that you're competing with in this area of the booking funnel? Who are the hotels that are charging this around the same rate as you, offering comparable amenities, and are in a similar location? And finally, the big question, how many times are you beating your competition when the traveler gets to this point? Is it 10%, 25, more than half? If you feel like you are losing this battle more often than not, or just want to see your winning percentage go up, you need to make a change and optimize this area of your online presence. Because when you do, it leads to incredible revenue gains and increased market share. If you do not, the only way that you'll be able to compete in this section is by dropping your rates, which as we know is not a sustainable revenue strategy long term. Now the good news is, is that of all the areas in this funnel, social media and reviews are one of the easiest to impact and change, and that is where our team at Travel Media Group specializes in, ensuring that when travelers move through the booking journey and find themselves at this point in the funnel, it's your hotel that wins, and you are chosen by the traveler. So at this time, as I mentioned, we have a poll. I'll go ahead and launch that poll now. Let's see here. Go ahead and launch that poll now uh, to see if anyone, in any of the hotels or group of hotels on this presentation would like one of our digital media specialists to give them a custom tailored consultation for your hotel to see how to improve your social media strategy, and online reviews. And, I'll, and to let everyone know, uh, there will be a copy of this recording sent out to everyone that has registered. And if you ask any questions, we'll be following up with you shortly after this. Give a couple more seconds for everyone to find that poll and go ahead and answer that question there. Awesome. Well, as promised, here is my direct contact number uh, if you have any other questions. And we're going to be continuing our 2019 educational webinar series with negative reviews 101, how to respond and resolve. This is a really hot topic on how to respond to negative reviews online. Thank you so much um, and have a fantastic rest of your week.